Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is Case 182 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. Today's case is different than the usual. Today, I will be sharing a case that was sent to me by a good friend and colleague that shows a complication. Of course, I will keep it anonymous, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to show this case that I think has some good educational points. So this was a young gentleman who presented with angina. He was found to have an LAD lesion on coronary CT angiography with positive FFRCT, and he was sent for coronary angiography and possible PCI. This is the coronary angiogram. Apicodal view shows a significant lesion into the mid-LAD right after the takeoff of a diagonal branch. There is some disease into the circumflex that does not seem to be occlusive. Same thing on the areocodal lesion in the middle LAD with moderate disease into the circumflex, and the same was confirmed in different views. In the areocranial, we see that uh, the lesion is uh, hidden behind the circumflex due to overlap, and we can see the lesion also in the areocranial as well. When it comes to the right coronary artery, there was a lesion in the proximal segment, but overall it was thought that the culprit lesion, based also on the FFRCT, was the LAD. So the plan was to perform PCI of the LAD. IVUS was done before after wiring both the left main as well as the circumflex, and the IVUS shows a vessel of about 3 millimeters uh, lumen diameter. Distal to the lesion, there is uh, some calcification, but not uh, very severe. And we see a large uh, plaque burden within the lesion. It is mainly soft plaque uh, without significant calcification. And again, the vessel is 1, 2, 3, close to 4 or more proximal. Um, and there is some calcification, but does not seem to be severe. So how to approach this lesion? There's also some plaque. You can see there's a little plaque uh, um, at the ostium of the LAD. The vessel was predilated with a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon, which one might argue might be a little undersized, given the intravascular ultrasound. And then a 2.5 by 18 millimeter stand was uh, deployed and post dilated with a 3.0 millimeter NC balloon. And then IVUS was performed. Um, what we see here is again a distal vessel. There is the stand. As we come more proximal, you can see that there's a lot of plaque behind the stand. There might be some stand under expansion. Uh, the stand seems to be a little better expanded more proximally. And this is the proximal edge of the stand. Again, we see quite a bit of uh, plaque burden, which may become relevant to um, the subsequent events. So based on this, uh, it was decided to stop the lesion. There's again good flow into the LAD, so the wire was pulled. However, after removing the guide, the patient started having chest discomfort and ST segment elevation, and then uh, there was uh, repeat angiography done emergently. And what we see here is acute thrombosis of the recently placed stand. And the thrombosis is at the ostium of the LAD. And as you can imagine, the patient is uh, not tolerating this very well. So what do we do if we got acute vessel closure? The first step is to maintain wine position, but unfortunately here the wire has been removed. So obviously that's not an option. Um, the next step is to understand the cause. And the causes are dissection, thrombosis, embolization, occlusion from a stand, a side branch, spasm, a pseudo lesion, equipment entrapment, intramural hematoma, and aortic dissection. In this case, the odds are overwhelmingly that this is due to a dissection. And also, when there is such an acute vessel closure, there may be a need for hemodynamic support, especially for a large vessel like the lady. Now, how do we approach the section, which again seems to be the most likely cause for occluding this vessel? If you have a wire, it's simple, you just put a stand, but if you don't, then you need to wire, confirm your interlumen, and then try to treat it. If this fails, then uh, the option is to do emergency coronary bypass, or if it's a small vessel, just let the vessel infarct. So a wire was advanced uh, through the LAD, balloon angioplasty was done. There's some flow starting to come back, although not that much. Uh, we see some flow into a septal, but still the whole vessel is occluded. Um, then the wire was advanced a little further down. We see now that uh, this seems to be in the course of the LAD. And we also see, encouragingly, there is some flow into this large diagonal branch that was at the proximal edge of the stent. 
but uh, uh, despite multiple balloon inflations, uh, uh, there was no restoration of undergrade flow. There's a concern from thrombosis, but the CT was therapeutic, and the patient had been loaded with uh, ticagrelor prior to the procedure. So after multiple attempts, the patient was sent for emergency bypass. There are multiple lessons from this particular case. So what we have here is acute vessa closure that uh, could not be recanalized, requiring emergency bypass. So first of all, let's come to prevention. What was the cause of the acute vessel closure? It is, of course, impossible to be sure, uh, especially post hoc. And again, um, there are multiple potential reasons, but the most likely explanation is probably a proximal edge dissection. As we saw on the initial ultrasound, there was significant blood uh, plaque burden proximal to the stent that might uh, be related to that. Alternatively, this could have been an intramural hematoma as well but the proximal edge seemed to be where the problem was. Now, once uh, the acute vessel closure happens, what can one do? The first step is to understand why this happened. And again, here it looks more likely dissection or thrombosis cannot be excluded. How do you treat it? You want to advance a guide wire, which was done very nicely in this case. We see the wire is going on the LAD and seems to be inside the stand that is in the true lumen. And then um, there were multiple balloon inflations that failed to restore the flow. Now, another option here would have been to use thrombectomy, penumbra, uh, thrombus aspiration catheter, a deeply seated kite extension, something to aspirate the thrombus because it's possible that because of the acute vessel thrombosis, there's a large thrombus burden in the vessel, which is the one preventing um, the flow from being restored. What else could have been done if that had failed? One could place some additional stents to try to squash the thrombus. One could have placed a wire in the diagonal doing some balloon inflation there as well. It was very nice that a wire was placed in the circumflex because sometimes when trying to aspirate thrombus from one vessel, the thrombus can come back and embolize in a different vessel. And by having a wire in that vessel, that could facilitate treatment in that case. But the bottom line is this patient did have an acute vessel closure. This uh, could not uh, be recanalized and eventually ended up going for emergency coronary bypass graft surgery. Thank you.